Uh, I just pray that you're blessed on this blessed morning. You notice I'm sitting down today. Uh, the Spirit of God led me to sit on this morning. Amen. And, and, and talk to God's people and, and speak to the people on this morning. And then I just pray that it blesses you on this morning. Uh, our scripture uh, this morning, very, 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 very familiar passage. Um, it is a scripture that I believe that we all should really live by. And I, I know it's a scripture that you all have probably been told uh, coming up uh, uh, as you grew up uh, along the way. And, but it's a very familiar passage, but it's so power packed uh, that I, I'm going to show you what God, I believe, really wants us to know uh, from this text. Uh, the text on this morning will come from Proverbs uh, chapter 22. Amen. Verse number six. Proverbs chapter 22. Amen. Verse number six. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number six. Amen. I'll read the word on this morning. Look what it says. It says this. Real simple, but real powerful. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I read the New International Version. It says this. It says, start children off <laughs> on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. My, 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 my. What an awesome word. What an awesome word on this blessed morning. I want to talk to you on this morning on the topic of the transfer. But before we do so, let us pray. Lord, thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we know we can't make it without you. We know, Lord, apart from you, there is no other. Lord, no matter what goes on around us, no matter what goes on in this world, no matter what goes on in our life, that does not diminish who you are, Father God. You are God and you are on the throne because there's nothing that catches you off guard. Lord, everything that happens, we have to accept the fact that you've allowed it. And I just pray, dear God, that you have your way with your servant, this vessel. So that your people will be blessed on this morning. That dear God we leave Lord this broadcast better than we were when we first tuned in. I love you Lord and I thank you. And I give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen. Truly, God is good, and he is good uh, all of the time. Amen. And uh, I am just so uh, excited on this morning to share uh, what I believe God really wants us to hear uh, on this blessed morning and uh, taking a look at that whole idea uh, of the transfer, of the transfer. Um, we got to understand that when we take a look at our world on today, and we take a look at society uh, and we take a look at our homes and we we take a look at everything around us. Uh, we've got to understand that no matter what we do, that God has given us what we need in order to make it in this world and in order to honor his name and in order to do things decent and in order. Um, Really and truthfully, when we look at the word of God, we've got to understand that there are many books out there. And I'm not against uh, uh, the, the believer reading other books and other material. But let me tell you something. If you just spend time in the word of God, you will see that it speaks on every aspect of your life. No matter what anybody says, it speaks on every level of our lives. And the Bible is just so amazing. And every time I pick it up, every time I read it, it blesses me because I see something that I might not have seen before. 
and it blesses me uh, in some kind of way. I want to take a look at this whole idea of the transfer. I want to paint a picture. I want to paint a picture. Um, when we take a look at this whole idea of the transfer, really what I want us to understand and I want us to see is that each generation that comes along has a responsibility to help the generation that is coming behind them to be able to succeed and be able to lead and be able to take the place of those that are in place now so that culture, society, our world, the church can continue. It is the responsibility of the current generation to set things up and also teach the upcoming generation in order for culture, society, and, and, and God's people to continue. Because what ends up happening in a lot of cases is that there's a gap between the younger generation and the older generation. And because of that gap, you have many frustrations that come along. And what happens is younger generations begin to blame older generations. Older generations begin to blame younger generations when in actuality, both generations have a responsibility to each other because the older generation is responsible for making sure they can relate the information to the younger generation so that when they come up, they can continue and do the things they need to do so that things keep going. But it's the younger generation's responsibility to understand and know that those that are in place at the moment, right, have established some things that they need to uh, buy into and need to adhere to and need to uh, uh, take into consideration so that they can now move on and take the place of that older generation when it's their turn. I do believe that there's been a, a breakdown, and I believe that that breakdown is in the communication department. And really and truthfully, I am at a point now in my life as a pastor, as an individual, as a father, as a believer, to understand that even though things are the way they are, we cannot make any excuses when it comes to the generation that is coming up behind us because we have a responsibility to teach them what they need to know so that they can come up and take my spot. There's going to come a time, and I pray that time comes, when I may have to retire right? And I may have to just sit back because I can't do what I used to do, right? And there's going to be a generation that's going to come up to be able to do the things that I once did. Well, if I never reach out, if I never talk to, if I never uh, go to them, if I never relate to them, if I never try to make an effort to try to teach them, what ends up happening is I get old, <laughs> I'm out of the scene, and what happens is there's gaps of things that need to be taken care of that cannot be taken care of because I didn't do enough to prepare the upcoming generation with what they need to survive, right? Now, and I know this is a touchy topic, but I pray by the end of what it is that I'm going to share with you that it blesses you in some kind of way. When you deal with the transfer, I want you to get that in your head. When you look at a transfer, I think of a quarterback, <laughs> right? When you think of a quarterback, there are times when that quarterback is going to do one of two things, right? He's going to either, when he has the ball in his hand, he's going to either pass the ball off, or he's going, he's going to, or he's going to pass the ball through the air. He'll either pass it off in a handoff, or he'll pass it off through the air. And that quarterback understands and knows that if he does not advance the ball, then 
really and truthfully, they will not be able to score and they will not, it'll make it less likely for them to win the game. See, just like that quarterback, all of us have to understand there's going to come a moment in our life where we either have to hand the ball off or we have to throw that pass and throw it to someone else that can advance the ball and go further in the direction that we need to go. We've got to get that. So there needs to be a what? A transfer. Also, with our legacy, right? We are responsible for sharing with our children and being an example to our children. And when they look at us, they have something to look at and mirror when we leave here. I want to ask us on this morning, what kind of legacy are we leaving for our children? Do they have something to look at or do they have something to talk about that they can actually look at and say, well, I may not do exactly what they do, but I sure can pattern myself after the things that they've, do, that, that they've done. Right. Even when God may call us home. Right. There's something called an inheritance. Right. That transfer. Right. Of the things that we've acquired to our children. There should be a, a transfer. Right. The core values, the things that are important, the things that they need to know to be good adults, to survive. And even when they have their own children, there's some core values we have to teach them. So when they become parents, they can take the things that we have taught them so they can share it with their children. I was a point guard in basketball. Right. And there were times when I wanted to shoot the ball, but there was somebody that was a little bit more open than I was. And guess what? I had to pass them the ball because they had a better shot. Can I help you? We've got to get that in our hearts and in our spirit that guess what? There comes a moment in our life where we've got to make the transfer top priority in our lives. Right. We've got to we've got to make that happen. And when we run that race, <laughs> amen, right, we can pass that baton and our children and our children's children and our children's children's children can keep on running and keep on going and keep on doing the things that they need to do to honor God and to take care of themselves and to take care of their families, right? We've got to get that. But I want to share with us that we can leave a legacy, we can teach things that are to our children's detriment. Well, Pastor, what do you mean? It's just like this virus, right? This virus <laughs> gets transferred from one person to the next. And I'm here to tell you, I don't want it, and I know none of you want it. But the virus is transferred from one person to the next person. People of God, we've got to understand that we cannot, we cannot, be in a position to where we're transferring viruses to the next generation. We're transferring negative things to the next generation. We're transferring those things that are not going to help them to the next generation, right? And see, how many of you know that hurt people hurt people, <laughs> right? So just because I'm hurt, right, I can literally transfer that same hurt to somebody else sometimes that didn't even do me anything. Lord have mercy. Somebody know what I'm talking about, right? And you've got to understand that we can't be responsible of transferring those things that cause us to give examples to our children to show them that mistreating others and right, doing negative things and not even taking care of our own selves, right? We can't pass those things on because I want to help somebody on this morning. People, children will pick up what you do, whether it's good, <laughs> Lord have mercy, or whether it's not so good. And we have a responsibility to show them how to do it the right way. We have that responsibility. I want to ask this question to those that are listening and those that may listen to me in the replay or in the times ahead. I want to ask this question. And this question is not a question that you just answer like that. 
This is a question that may cause you to reflect. And it's a question to where we can't point the finger at anybody else. It's a question that all of us have to look within and see whether or not we fit the description. All right, hear me and hear me well, right? We can, we can point out injustice and we can hold rallies all day long. But the question is, have we set up the next generation to lead and succeed? Oh, Jesus. Because let me tell you something. When they do get justice, when they do get equal treatment, when they do get the things that they're fighting for, do they have a fighting chance to hold on to it? Because how many of you know that freedom comes with responsibility? And we have to work to maintain our freedom. And if we don't do the necessary things to maintain our freedom, it will get taken away from us. So have we set that next generation up to succeed? We can talk about the ills and the, and, and the, and the, and the lack of justice in our world, but we've got to make sure that when we get it, that we're able to pass on the baton and those that God has allowed us to bring into this world will be able to move on and not just get it. Lord have mercy, because if you own something, you understand it's not just about having it. You got to take care of it, too, so that they're able to take care of the, 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 the freedoms that they are going to possess. Lord have mercy. See. I want to ask this question again. Another question. What kind of condition are our children in? That, that generation that's coming up. What kind of condition are they in? Right? And are they in a position to carry the baton? Woo! That's a million dollar question. Are they in a position to carry the baton. Now, I'm going to be a little comical now, so don't shoot me for it. But I tell some of my students sometimes in the school system, I'm like, oh my goodness, y'all are the ones that are going to be taking care of me when I get old. Boy, I'm sure enough in trouble. <laughs> right? Because why? Because the children of today, right, will be our caretakers, what, of tomorrow. So we've got to get that. And we've got to understand that, and we've got to embrace that, and we've got to invest in them now so that later on they have what they need to carry on what they need to carry on. Now, I want to go ahead and go to the text, and I'm going to share some things from the text. Hear me well. It says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right. I'm going to deal with that word train. Right. The word train and doing a study of the word train. It baffled me and it helped me to understand things a little bit clearer. Right. When you look at the word train, let me tell you what it means. It means to devote, to inaugurate, to assign, to initiate to indoctrinate or to mold, okay? Let me make that, let me make that a little bit more plain. I know many people, when they get a certain age or when they go off to college or, or, or when they get to a certain point in their life, they seek to become a part of a particular fraternity or sorority, right? Or some kind of secret society or whatever you want to call it, right? And what I've learned is this, is that when you take a look at those fraternities and sororities and those societies, you've got to understand, you can't just walk in the door, right? There's some things that you've got to learn. There's some things that sometimes some fraternities and sororities, they even beat into you. Amen. Some of y'all who, who pledge, you know, yeah, they, 
Put that paddle on your behind. Amen. Right? Some organization, you've got to learn some things. Some things are beat into you. And, and you've got to not only know it, but the people that are in charge want to make sure that it's what? Ingrained in you to continue the philosophy of that fraternity. Yes, it's called an initiation. Amen. Well, preacher, what does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything. Because being parents is just like initiating our children in the ways of God. And we've got to get that in our minds to grab that and understand that when we look at that word train, it's deeper than just looking at it on face value. It means really you have to do the necessary things to initiate your children so that they go in the right way, they do the right things, and they have the right philosophy in their lives and moving and moving forward. Right? It says train up a child. Hear me well. Oh my goodness. It says train up a child. <laughs> I'll say it again. Train up, keyword, child. Hear me well, people. Hear me well. And there's some things and circumstances in life, really and truthfully, we have no control over. But I think this one right here is where many of us, as parents, as the generation now, have fallen short. It says, train up a child. Well, pastor, press your point. You see, how many of you know that it's a lot easier, right, to teach, train, and initiate a child from down here at birth and moving up in life than it is for them to get grown and gone and then try to teach them and initiate them and train them. Once they reach a certain age, I got to help somebody on this morning. Once they reach a certain age, there's some stuff that, guess what, you can't do, you can't control, and they're going to do whatever they're going to do, right? By that time, guess what, any kind of impact you was going to ever have on them, guess what, it's done. Because why? Because you've got to understand, you've got to train them up as a child, right? As a, as a child. Right? Right? As a child, right? See, it's easier to bend a stem, right? Because if you bend, you can bend a stem, but I'm, I promise you, you will break a branch. <laughs> Some of you caught that, right? You can bend a stem, but you will break a branch, right? So we've got to make sure that we do the things we need to do, right, when they are children right when they are when they are children right i want to read a quote from frederick douglas a quote from frederick douglas bless my life i think i might have posted it before but i'll share it again this is the quote he made it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men <laughs> That's by Frederick Douglass, abolitionist, one who fought against slavery, one who understood what it took in order to help that previous generation. He said, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. I want to help us on this morning, whether we like it or not, whether we want to deal with it or not, whether we want to face it or not. People, what we have in our world, in our society today, they're just broken men, right? Broken, broken men. And by whatever circumstance, they're broken. They're either broken by society, they're broken by the stigmas that society has put on them, they're broken by broken homes, they're broken by parents who've broken their spirit, that they're broken by people who have devalued them, that they're broken by not receiving what they needed when they were at a certain age. They're just broken, 
right? And we've got to understand we can we can we can be like <laughs> other people and call them thugs. Yeah, read between the lines. But they are broken men. And come to find out, <laughs> when you take a look at it, sometimes what you see is not really what you see. But I'll talk about that later. Right? But they're just broken men. Right? Broken men. That need what? Need repair. And can I help you? We've got to go into repair mode, people. Right? We're going to work with those children. But we've got to make sure we help to repair those broken men that we have in our society on today. But look what it says. It says this. It says, train up a child in the way. Right? In the way. In the way. Right? Okay, Pastor, help me out with that. See, when you look at that in the way, you've got to understand the Bible clearly says that there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death, all right? So we've got to understand that no matter what we think about anything, right, Solomon has shared with us, right, in the word of God, that really and truthfully, that sometimes there's a certain way that many people might go in, it may seem right to us, right, may seem right to us, but in the end, it is what? It is destruction. Now I'm going to share something, people, and I, and I pray that it blesses you and I pray God opens your heart to it. Because I believe God's people need to hear this and that we all need to hear this. People of God, we've got to understand that it is a disservice to our children. It is a disservice to the upcoming generation to try... Hear me well, to make life so easy for them that, oh, I don't want them to come up as hard as I came up. People, that is a danger. And what I find is, through observation and through prayer and seeking God, he's shown me that in many cases, we've messed up in many ways because we try to make life so easy for our children sometimes they have so much sometimes that they can't even appreciate, appreciate the work, the sweat, the time, and all the energy that you have put in to getting where you are or where we are. So we've got to understand that that way has to get thrown out of the window, right? We have got to train our children. We have got to spend time with our children. We've got to teach them the ways of God. We've got to spend the time we need so that they understand how to be grateful. They understand that they need Christ in their life. They understand they need to spend time in the word of God. They understand that they need to make a mark on society to not only be selfish and do things to help them, but to also do things to help other people. We can't continue in that way. We can't do it because you've got to understand this one thing. If we don't train them and teach them and indoctrinate them and initiate them to help them to understand, no, life is not always easy. And mom and daddy is not going to be here all the time. So I'm going to train you with what you need. So when you get out, so when you go where you go, when you're on your own, when mama or daddy might not be here any longer, guess what you can do? You can carry on the legacy and you can understand the sweat, blood, and tears that went forth into getting you where you are. I believe many of our children don't understand the sacrifices that were made to get them where they are today. That's why they're so doggone ungrateful, some of them, because they don't understand that they didn't get here on their own and they don't have what they have because they've done it right and all this other stuff. They have what they have because somebody had what paved the way for them to enjoy the things that they do enjoy. And we've got to make sure we get them to understand that. And when you look in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, look what it says. It says, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
and there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it. I want to help us on this morning, right? Training our children, hear me well, training our grandchildren, right? In the world today is hard, right? We can't make light of it. We can't walk around and try to neglect uh, the fact that it's difficult raising children in today's time. It's the way to teach them the way of righteousness is difficult, right? But, but it leads to life. You show me someone who's willing to sacrifice the time, the energy, the sweat, and invest in their children, not just with money, but with good wisdom, with, with time, with energy, with pushing them in the right direction, right? Show me someone who does that, and I'll show you someone who will more than likely have some good fruit from their labor, right? So we got to understand it's not an easy task, right? We can't, now I'm about to go somewhere, don't, 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 don't hit me too hard, but I, I got to say it, we can't just shut them away. Oh, take this tablet and go, right? Oh, take this and go. Oh, oh, get out my face. Take that and go. No, no, people. We can't do that no more. We can't let the TV raise them. We can't let the, the screen raise them. We can't let the phone raise them, right? We got to raise them. <laughs> so there's some time. We got to cut that phone off. We got to cut, we got to cut off all that, all that stuff that they're exposed to and say, no, we're cutting it all off. We're spending time today. We're going to spend time together today. Because why? Because we got to train. We got to spend that time. And we've got to mold them. And we've got to initiate them. Amen. Look what it says. It says, train up a child in the way they should go, right? Go. When I looked at that word go and I looked it up and I did a study, really, if I'm here, right, <laughs> if I'm in the spot that I'm in, amen, right, in order for you to say that I, like, I've gone somewhere, I would have to leave from where I am and go somewhere and end up somewhere, right? So when you look at that whole idea of go, you've got to understand it has the connotation of not just going and just kind of fiddling around. It says in the way they should go, where they're going to end up, right? Where they're going to end up, their destiny, right? Their fulfilled purpose, where they're going to end up in the way they shall go, right? That, that finished product, right? In the way they should go, right? We've got to be con concerned by where, about where our children, that next generation, will end up, right? We have to make a conscious effort to do that, right? I'm going to use this as an example, right? And many of you are going to be able to relate as to what I'm saying, right? When I think about in the way they should go, parents, you can relate, right? And I can relate on the other end, I, I, on, 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 on the other, I'm, I'm going to be able to enjoy it later. Uh, uh, I'm praying, God willing, but, but I've experienced it from the other end or from my parents. Nothing does a parent's heart good like seeing their children walk, walk across that stage graduating from college, right? Now, I'm not diminishing high school, don't, don't get me wrong, right? Don't give me, because see, when you graduate from high school, you still got some decisions to make and all this other stuff, right? So there's some, still some time in between. So I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking high school, but when you see that child graduate from college, or when they, when they, when they, when they, when they walk across that aisle and get, get married, and, and you know that they pick somebody that actually loves them, right? When they, when they buy, when they buy their first, their first house, Right? Or when they make an accomplishment as an adult and you're able as a parent to go and enjoy that with them. Right? I was, I was able to watch a lot of people uh, 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 get inducted into the Hall of Fame. And it, man, it, it blows me away. Right? I watch these grown men, <laughs> these grown men, big, uh, uh, almost 400 pound men get behind the mic and cry like babies. Right? And their parents are in the, in the audience crying as well because they see where their child has gone, right? They see the fruit 
of their labor. They see all the work, sweat, blood, and tears that they put in. Now their child has actually accomplished something that they can be proud of. Right? See, we've got to we've got to understand that really and truthfully that 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 does that does a heart good and as parents and as as the current generation, we've got to be about that so we can enjoy those moments later so that we won't have to deal with something. Now, life is what it is, right? Things are going to transpire the way they transpire, but let me tell you something. If we do it God's way, I promise you we'll end up in a better place than if we don't. Right? We've got to get that I'm going to testify right now. Now, some folk may say, oh, Pastor, this ain't about you. Well, doggone it, I'm still going to testify, right? Because I believe that if I'm going to preach it, right, I ought to know something about it, and I should be able to testify about it, right? I remember my mother and my father and the things that they've taught me along the way and all the things they've instilled in me. They did some things along the way that I know others did not do. I'm not talking about anybody, right? I'm not trying to diss nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? And I've seen my parents do some things that were different from everyone else, right? And I've seen my parents receive scrutiny for doing it the way they were doing it for not allowing us to do some things that other folk was doing. And by doing some things and teaching some things in their house that really and truthfully other folk was allowing in their house, right? Now, I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, I'm just testifying, right? And let me tell you something, God, he blessed me this morning, right? I, I almost couldn't hold it together. I cried because I realized something, that my parents understood what God was saying in his word, train them up in the way that they should go. When I look at me, a black man, 42 years old, I'm the baby boy of six boys. My oldest brother, unfortunately, he passed when he was young, but it's six boys. People I want you to hear me, right? We are a rarity, right? We are a rarity, six boys. Right? None of us have been to Angola. All of us are taking care of our children. All of us own homes. All of us have jobs. Right? Why are you telling me that, Pastor? You bragging. No, I ain't bragging. I'm just saying that I've seen it done God's way. And when you do it God's way, there's some fruit that you're going to see. Six black men that you can't talk about and call thugs. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Can't call me that. I even, I don't have a record. And guess what? If I do get one, it's one they're going to try to pin on me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Because I love my freedom. And I ain't going to do nothing to lose it. Because I know when my freedom is taken away from me, I have no power. <laughs> the Holy Spirit. Right? I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. I realize that Lewis and Dorita, they did something right. They did something right. And let me tell you, if it was good enough for me, <laughs> it's good enough for my children, right? It's good enough for them too. Now along the way, don't get me wrong, you got to, your children is a little bit different. You got to learn them. You got to, you got to do different. But let me tell you something, right? Don't throw away. Don't throw away what mom and daddy taught you. Don't throw that away. Because some of us know that, yeah, <laughs> we was drugged to church. We was drugged to Bible study, <laughs> right? Right? But for some reason, it stuck, right? Oh, Jesus. Hey! But it says, in the way that they should go, for when, watch it now, when they, he is old, he will not, he will not depart when he is old. My prayer, I'm not going to lie to you, for me as a parent, I don't want to be responsible for raising a fool. Because <laughs> I know a lot of old fools. I ain't talking about nobody, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Some of y'all can testify, right? You know some old fools, right? I don't want to be responsible for raising no old fools, right? Now, if they go out and they do what they want to do, right? And, I, and, and, and it's something that they just picked up and they wanted to, that's on them. But I sure don't want to indoctrinate them with something that's going to label them as an old fool. <laughs> Say when they grow old, when they are mature, when they are aged, 
Lord have mercy, right? And see, we've got to understand that we've got to make sure, we've got to work to ensure that their numerical age matches their level of wisdom. Somebody caught that, somebody, somebody didn't. But it says when they grow old, they won't depart. Lord have mercy. They won't depart. See, you've heard the phrase before, they may stray, but they can't stay. Right? Let me tell you what the, the, the underlying thing of that means. It just means if you put the right stuff in them, even if they go in the wrong direction, you still put some stuff in them that's going to bless them in some kind of way to help them remember what's right. So you still have to instill right in them, right? So when they grow old, you put something in them that they can run back to. <laughs> somebody caught it and somebody didn't. Amen. Somebody caught it and somebody didn't. I'm going to use this illustration. It's like an untrained professional. Okay, preacher. What do you mean? Well, it's like an untrained professional. It's like allowing somebody and giving them a job, right, and saying, go out there, right, go do this, go do that. And you hadn't trained them, you hadn't given them the things they need, you haven't sat them down, you haven't taught them nothing, and you say, oh, go do this, go do that. And you give them an assignment, and then you mad at them because they don't do it right. Well, you didn't train him. Amen, praise the Lord. <laughs> it's kind of like this. How many of you can agree with me that the last thing you want is for your pilot or your surgeon to say, oops, because they didn't learn something in class. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> right. You don't want that. Right. So you want them to be trained. Well, we've got to train our children. Right. And instill some stuff in them that they can what draw from. Right. They can pull from. We got to put something in. Right. You got to download some stuff in them. Right. So that they can what? <laughs> so they can refer back to it. Amen. Save it on their hard drive. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Whatever works. Amen. I'm just trying to relate. Amen. <laughs> right. Save it so that they can have something to draw from. Right. And you put something in there. Right. This statement bless my life. You can't hold on to something you never had. Right. You can't. Hold on to something you never had, right? You've got some people, they become adults and they have nothing to hold on to because they never got it. They never had it. They never got the time and attention and training they need to in order to make it, right? So we've got to get that. We've got to understand that. And we've got to hold that dear to our hearts. People of God, we've got to understand that we've got to train up this next generation in the way that they should go. So when they grow old, they won't depart. And when God may move us out of the scene, guess what? They can work. They can, they can do what they need to do, right? And I'm telling you, not just, not just in our homes, in, in our churches, right? In our communities. We, we've got to do that. Because I'm going to tell you, even as a pastor, I've seen a disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation, right? We've got to find a way to make that connection. Why? Because they're going to be the ones to carry things on, right? And I've said this before. People don't like it when I say it, but I mean it. I don't want St. Mary to die when I die, right? I don't want things to stop moving when I am no longer on the scene, right? Whatever church you're a part of, you shouldn't want everything to fall apart when you're no longer there. No, you've got to train. You've got to, you've got to put those kids to work and get them into action. So guess what? When it's time for you to sit back and move off the scene, guess what? You can sit back with reassurance that guess what? They got what they need in order to continue on the legacy. Lord have mercy, Jesus, right? So remember, the transfer has got to take place. We've got to keep that on. There's a transfer that's got to take place. Don't hold it all, right? There's some stuff that you got to teach that next generation, right? Teach them how to work. Teach them them recipes, right? Teach them those core values. Teach them right from wrong. Teach them the things that maybe that you've gone through in your life, that you've experienced, the things that you had to do to get where you are. Teach them that. Right. They need to know that so they can know that. Guess what? You know, I can't sit here and act like I've done it all on my own. No. Yeah. I came here on the backs 
of people who have actually done some stuff to help me to get where I am right now, right? So never ever, never ever, never ever. Don't forget the transfer. Don't, don't forget the transfer. Because a transfer has to be made from one group to the next in order for our children to be able to make it, right? And when all of this stuff pans out, all of the stuff in the news and, the, and all of this stuff, right? We've got to have a plan. We've got to have a plan of action. We've got to have some stuff in place so that when we get that justice, when we get that freedom, we can maintain it, right? Because freedom comes with what? Responsibility, right? And I just pray to God that what was shared on this morning blessed you in some way. Amen. God told me to sit and talk to you this morning, right? And, and just, just sit and talk to the people this morning. I just pray that it blessed you in some kind of way and, and that, that I put something on your mind. Amen. For some of you, you're going to have to, you're going to have to go home and you're going to have to, uh, uh, well, you're already at home, praise the Lord, <laughs> right? You're going to have to sit down and reflect on some things, right? Not, not, not for self-condemnation, no. Just to reflect, what can I do to do better, right? What can I do to, to, to help the situation? What can I do to move things in the right direction, right? Because we all got to do that. We're all responsible for that, right? We can't make any more excuses. No, we can't. We can't make any more excuses. It's on us. It's on all of us to do what we need to do. Do what we need to do. Pray that bless you in some kind of way. And I just thank God for using me. And I would be remiss not to acknowledge the fact that it's Christ Jesus, my Lord and my Savior, that has given me the love, grace, and mercy, and power to speak on his behalf. And I'm just praying right now that somebody that may be listening, somebody that may not have a relationship with God, you can through his son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life so that we can have life. He hung, he bled, he died, but he rose again the third day in victory over sin and death. He's good and he's God and he loves you. And all he wants you to do is say, I surrender. Surrender what, Pastor? I surrender what I want to do to what God wants to do with me. Right? God says you can be a part of his family. Right? You can have a home in glory. You can have life in this life and after this life. I'm just asking, is there one? Scroll across the screen. Or I give my heart to God. I, I, I want to. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, do that. Send it through the messenger. Do that. But whatever you do, give your heart to God. Because life without Him is not living. My 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 my. my.
says, I want to give my life to Christ. Saints of God, we should be shouting right now, giving God praise right now, because heaven rejoice for one. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, my sister. Bless you. Amen. Let us be praying for our sister. Amen. And I pray to God that God blesses her in some way. Sister Wanda, we're going to reach out to you and share with you some things and some steps that you just need to take as a believer, a new believer in Christ. Because anytime you make that step, you've got to understand there's some things you've got to do along the way to stay on the journey. So we thank God and bless God for you. We give you, we give you, we just give you all you need to continue. We give God all the praise that he deserves. Amen. Amen. And amen again. My, my, my. My, my. Thank you, Jesus. thank God for being God and I just I thank God amen amen thank you brother brother David amen also sister Rito amen let's praise God amen amen thank you Lord 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 you are good you are great you are mighty and you are wonderful amen God is real thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. 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 My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My, 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 my. Thank you. of God. God is good. 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 Thank God for you. 
being sensitive to the spirit and, and listening to God and, and, and moving when, he, when he's moved in your heart. God bless you real good. And I, Saints of God, my heart is full. My heart is full. My heart is full. And I'm just kind of led to pray right now. And I just thank God for being God. Just thank God for being God. Lord, I thank you for today and this morning. Lord, you're good, you're mighty, you're wonderful, and I, I give you all that, Lord. My words can't express how grateful I am to you. Lord, I just thank you for using me, dear God. I just pray, Lord, for my sister. Lord, I pray for both of our sisters that have come today. Lord, watch over them, Lord. Bless them, touch them. Lord, allow them, Lord, to begin their walk with you so that they can continue on in your word, your will, and your way. And I just pray you have mercy on them, dear God. Whoever else, Lord, may not, maybe haven't even shared it, but have, have done it in their heart. Bless them too, Father God. And I just pray you have your way. Even in the midst of what's going on, Lord, you at work. And I just pray you continue. Continue to do your thing, Lord. Use me like you see fit. Lord, and I pray. Pray you have mercy. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. joining in. Amen. Amen. And uh, I just pray to God that you were blessed on today. Um, Y'all pray for me, please. I'll be praying for you all. Um, I pray, pray for you all all the time that God blesses you in some kind of way, that he continues to protect you, guard you, and keep you. Pray for me. Uh, I may not be, I, I, I know God has not called me to be a popular preacher, but it's my prayer that God would allow me to be used to just share the truth with people. Because there's so much deception in the world right now. You know, you got so many people just trying to take advantage of people in situations. I just, I just want to tell the truth. And it's not always easy because, you know, but God is who he is, and he wants to use us to show us his truth. Amen. And I just want to encourage each one of you to be used by God, to share his word, and to do his will. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And I thank you. Amen. Bless you. You all have been, you've been supporting, you've been giving, you've been praying, you've been doing it all. And I, let me tell you something, I, my, my heart is, my heart is full right now. That God, even in the midst of everything, God is moving in a way that, let me tell you something, can't even be understood. And so, God bless you and may continue to keep you, is my prayer. And I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Any prayer requests you might have, just send them through messages, the church messenger. Amen. Scroll them across the screen. I always go back and I, I look at some of the things I might have missed that you said and I, I try to interact in some kind of way. So if I miss it, just scroll it across the screen and let me know uh, so that we can so we can do what we need to do on our end. Thank you. Uh, love you. Uh, God loves you. <laughs> and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. God bless you real good. Uh, is 